Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Anissa Avon, and I am thrilled to welcome you to another talk uh, inside our Leaning in a Crisis Virtual Summit, sponsored by Turnkey Coaching and Development Solutions. Um, this is all about actionable business and HR strategies for navigating crisis and change. So. We're thrilled to have you with us. And today I'm excited about um, having expert speaker and executive coach, Kim Zillox with us. Hello, Kim. Hello. So glad you could join us. I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning more about navigating 2020 with serenity and strength. So thank you. So before we begin, I wanna quickly say thank you to our sponsors. Um, without our sponsors, the entire summit, which now we've got nearly 70 speakers, it started in March as just a how can we help and now it's gone all the way through July and um, I feel like it's something that has uh, created a very meaningful impact in a lot of ways and so I want to say thank you to David Whitmarsh and his team at the Whitmarsh Consulting Group. They are a group of um, HR niche marketers who are really exceptionally qualified in the area of multi-channel marketing. If you or your team would benefit from a marketing specialist, I highly recommend you reach out to David, tell him that I mentioned uh, his name and, and gave him a good recommendation. Um, also want to say thank you to some of our internal team that have put together some pretty comprehensive uh, training and development and coaching programs specifically for some of the needs of 2020. Um, one of which is we've taken our diversity and inclusivity program and we've dusted it off and revised it to be appropriate for um, what's going on in our world today. So if you or your team are reevaluating how you're going to approach your DNI goals for 2020 and beyond and your culture development goals, um, whether it is in assessing the needs or training or coaching or targeted development or even um, some of our clients are doing discussion circles just in support of all levels of communication and discussion. So I would welcome the opportunity to, to, to support you and your goals with that. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Anissa Avon, and I am the CEO of Turnkey Coaching and Development Solutions. We are a single point of contact learning and development firm. We have expert trainers and coaches like Kim um, in every major metropolitan area in the U.S. and in key hubs globally. And we specialize in um, single point uh, solutions, including outplacement services and virtual training, uh, leadership development, executive coaching, and even management consulting and OD consulting. So that leads me to um, uh, introducing you to Kim. Kim is the founder of KZ Leadership. And she has tremendous experience, um, not the least of which is Kim holds a master's degree in business administration. Um, she also has a master's degree in career counseling. She is an author, a certified coach, and a master facilitator. Um, Kim has more than 20 years of experience with executive coaching and management consulting. She is in every sense of the word, um, from her passion to her experience, a leadership expert. Uh, her background includes sales and sales management, and she is even a sought after trainer of trainers. So in her variety of roles, both as a consultant and in her former career, she has the experience to bring to this topic on navigating uh, the roller coaster of 2020. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and say, thank you, Kim. Share with us what we're going to learn today. Wow. Well, I'll just say that's one of the best intros I've ever had. So thank you so much for that. I felt great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me pop up my PowerPoint here. And I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I'm assuming you can, you can see it, just validating that, right? Yeah, let me double check. Yes, that's yours. Okay, okay, great. All right, so today's, it's, it's so exciting to be here with everybody that's you know not only joining us live, but that will be reviewing this replay later. So when I thought about speaking for the summit and everything that y'all are doing at, at Turnkey here for the summit, 
I thought about, okay, speaking in the beginning of July, where are we going to be? Where are my clients right now? What am I seeing? And what I've seen, of course, over the last three, four and a half months is incredible resiliency, incredible um, reactivity, incredible handling and responding to all the change that we've been going through. And what my clients are really looking for now is the re they're looking towards the rest of 2020 That's and right. really that inspiration of how can we get through that with some strength, with a little bit of serenity and really yes. kind of um, be proactive in navigating the rest of 2020. So that's what today's, the, the design of today is about. That's You'll see perfect. the backdrop of the roller coaster that's on purpose because any this is, is, I mean, any change experience is a roller coaster. That is exactly it. We do, I do think that we are not seeing your screen now. Um, Paige just gave okay. us a little bit of feedback. Okay. So we'll share your screen again. And I think what this I was funny, we, we, we tested on. this, not, uh, <laughs> not five minutes ago and it worked just fine, but let me reshare it. You bet. I'll just go in this way. Uh, All right. Now it's coming up, Kim. And now I'll pop it. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you for that. You bet. You never know. Tech not great when it works and not when it doesn't. So anyway, so Basically, all that was just a backdrop to see, or, or an introduction to say that you see the roller coaster slide now in front of you. And any change experience that we um, go through is a bit of a roller coaster. And then, of course, especially 2020, there's a bit of a double loop. So we're going to talk about the roller coaster that we've been on and how we continue to ride it for the rest of the year with some strength and serenity. Yeah. So first, I I'd love for people to just think about what are you, what have you experienced already? So you can chat it in privately, write it down, chat it publicly if you want. What emotions and thoughts have you experienced over the last four and a half months and since, since all of this first hit us? Well, you know, so you just are your word cloud here, and um, we're going to get some of those in the chat as well. Um, really represents, you know, uh, we've got anxiety coming up, sad, um, lonely. Um, for me, it's been um, isolated, you know, not mm. seeing my family, um, worry, depression, um, and, and even feeling naughty at times. Like we went out on the boat a couple of weeks ago and I'm like, I'm really a bad person. You know? So there's, there's yeah. some difficulty on all sides of this equation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Confused, powerless. I powerless. love that. So yeah. And I did want to little prime it a little bit here by putting in some of these, these um, thoughts and emotions in the word cloud. It's just really important always, but especially as we navigate through change to take a step back and reflect on what have yeah. we been through and sort of process that to be able to move forward. So perfect. Fantastic. Continue to think about that. One of the reasons that I start with that exercise is that it's a great foundational exercise for self-awareness, which is an important uh, function and strength and skill of emotional intelligence. So with all of my one-on-one -on -one clients, with most of the organizations I work with, I talk about emotional intelligence. I know that in this summit, you've covered this topic frequently, so I'm not, we're not going to dive into it deeply it's just always an important sort of foundational backdrop to talk about, um, especially as we work through the process of change. So just a reminder, you know, any questions you have or, or any work you want to do on emotional intelligence, I highly encourage it. Self-awareness, that first step is, is what we just kind of started with is what, what are my emotions and, and thoughts and feelings? What have I been through and where am I at today? So we're going to cover a lot of that in today's conversation. Also moving into self-management, which is what we do with our emotions and our thoughts. So managing ourselves well. So I'm imagining there's gonna be lots of, you know, there are lots of leaders and maybe influencers right now viewing this and listening to courting. We know that what we do impacts others tremendously. So we need to make sure that we're managing ourselves well. Of course, then moving into that social awareness, being aware of what's going on for others, what has been going on for them and, and, where they, and meeting them where they're at. And then finally, that relationship management, which is really pulling all those together to work with others well and positively and proactively. And, and really, like I say here, be a great and amazing influencer and, and leader. So I can't help but start with that little backdrop for our conversation today. Agreed. Beautiful. Fair enough. Okay. Yes. 
So with that, let's move into change. And, and I wanted to just find out from the folks that are at least here live listening, yeah. how much have you studied already around the topic of change and change management? So you can either type in, you know, the words, you can type in the letter A through D. So whether it's just not much, a little bit, a fair amount, or for joining in, what I was going to share with you is because a lot of our clients and, and um, peers are in the HR space. Yep. Um, you know, we are pretty savvy around change management. Um, yeah. And that's what's kind of coming in in the chat. A whole lot. <laughs> Good. E, Good. a lot. <laughs> Okay, so it depends on, um, you know, I speak with a lot of, to a lot of organizations on the topic of change. Some have studied it a bit, some a lot. So it kind of goes across the board, and this is great because for those of you who already have a great understanding, here are just some reminders, right, that in leaders and influencers, how you respond will, of course, guide others. We know that, right? That's, you know, people will follow based on our kind of energy and, and attitudes. Um, always a good reminder for those of us who tend to put others first to put on your own oxygen mask. I know it's ironic because we're, you know, masks are the <laughs> topic these days, but put on that own, your own oxygen mask first before you can help others. I actually think to speak frankly about that now more than ever, right? If we're not, if we're not healthy, if we're not sane, if we're not finding some peace and serenity, we are not going to be able to be there for others. And I don't know about you, Anissa, but that is what I'm seeing in some of my clients and some of my HR partners. Um, it's been it's been a tough road over the last four and a half months. And so, I will say that the big part of today's um, talk is a, is a big gift to them. I hope. Um, just a reminder, as we know, for those of you who have studied this topic a lot, that uh, many times leaders, influencers, find out about change first. Not always, but it, they're at least often a step ahead of the people that they inform. So even those, the thing, things like everyone's gonna work from home. Some of you know, my HR partners knew that before, obviously they marshaled the troops to, to get them ready to work from home. So um, I put a model, a, a visual of my model here that I use for the change experience, just so we can have a visual here all the models kind of many of the models kind of look like this but if we look through the curve as people walk through the change experience you know oftentimes leaders and influencers are sort of ahead on that change curve so it's a great reminder that just to remember that anytime someone hears about a change the minute they hear about it that red star that's where they are at so we have to let them allow them time to process and go through um the change, the change process. So we're going to talk about the detail in, in a little bit, but um, we know that our the culture of any organization is a result of actions and attitudes from everybody within the organization, but especially the leaders and, and major influencers in the organization. So I love to talk about culture and how to be proactive in creating it. And I think today, I hope hopefully that will impact your culture positively. So with that, I want to go through the, the stages. And what I did is I took a little um, you know, I took the basic foundations of change and just really layered them specifically onto what we've gone through the last four and a half months or with a, through a 2020 lens. And um, I really want to encourage you all, again, with your own oxygen mask, go through this the first time for yourself. I don't know about you. I don't know how many people sit and reflect on an ongoing basis about their experience and, and allow themselves time to process not one of my clients really does that naturally. So today is an opportunity to really honestly do that for yourself. And then we'll circle back around and make sure that you're, you're doing it well for your people. Okay. So with that state, step one is this sort of baffled, confused, what is going on? What is this thing that we're hearing about? Will it affect us? What is it? Remember back four and a half months ago, we kind of went through that quickly moved into that anxiety and fear, which, which we all know that's where we've got this, you know, sign on our forehead saying, what's in it for me? That's, you know, how is this going to affect me? Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to have a reduced income? Am I going to be furloughed? Is my, am I going to be able to um, su supply for my family? Now what's going on with my kids home? <laughs> how am I going to be able to work and, and have my kids in school, right? What are, what's going on with my family? My friends, all that anxiety, fear, unknown come rushing in soon after that. 
So then that next phase is we, we stay a little bit in the bargaining and denial phase of, do we really need to be doing all this? Is it really gonna hit us here? It, uh, do we have to wear these masks? Do we have to stay home? You know, anything, anytime a change comes, all those questions come in and I, you know, I don't really feel like I need to do that. It's not that bad. Then of course the resentment, that anger and resentment, which, which hit pretty hard. And that's, you know, kind of where we are, we're all at about a month ago and, and, you know, the Black Lives Matter, all those events just sort of layered on top of it of, I don't like this. I don't like what's going on. I didn't choose it. I don't want it. I don't want to do what they're telling me to do and anything from they shouldn't tell me to do it or they should be telling us different things and more. So um, lots of pointing fingers uh, at this stage. So finally, you know, as we look at that, that curve, that, that change curve, the bottom is really, it, it can be looked at as depression. Certainly mm -hmm. funk. I know you said depression earlier, Anissa, you know, that's just really where it, it, we're in the middle of it. And it's just, this is hard. Like I said before, I didn't choose it. I don't want it. I don't like it. And I have sort of less energy around it. And like you said, I feel isolated in, in this particular situation. I feel lonely. I miss what was. With any change, you know, that's going to go on, especially right here at this phase. With any change, what goes down will come up, <laughs> as we know eventually. So acceptance is really that first step out of the change. You know, this is where we start to look at, okay, this is the way it is. You know, I do have to stay inside. I do have to manage who I'm around and socially distance myself, wear the masks or, or whatever the change is. I can handle it. I can self-regulate. I'm an adult. I'm a professional. You know, this is the, the beginning of kind of coming out of it positively. And then finally, or second to last, moving into serenity of really finding peace on a daily basis inside of the loss and the chaos. Yeah. So it is actually possible to have peace on a consistent basis, even like even on that roller coaster that you're seeing right now, even inside of, of the, the loss and the chaos. And, you know, we all know that there's more to come. We're, you know, nowhere near through the end of this. And so just it's a, an incredible skill to develop to be able to find peace throughout all of it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it. And then really where we want to get to soon is, it, or, you know, at least by the end of the year is I've got my mojo back. You know, I understand what's happened. I reflected on it. I've learned from it. And I've learned I'm, and we're going to fill in the blanks, but resilient, powerful, strong, adaptive, all those, those fantastic words. You know, I have a, a quick question for you and you can yeah. tell me if we're going to cover this in a little bit. Sure. Um, part of 2020 is that it's 20 times 20 mm. crises. You know, we, yeah. we do, we have COVID, we have um, uh, racial unrest. We've had, um, what was it? It started the year with the Australian uh, bushfires and, yeah. you know, then the sand in the Sahara coming in and people getting sick from in America, you know, from what's happening over there. And then, um, there was, there's been floods and there's unrest and other unrest in India. And for heaven's sakes, Iran, wasn't it Iran that shot down a, a, um, a civilian uh, plane just yeah. a few years ago? I mean, that alone would have been, oh my God, are we going to war? You know, yep. so my question is, it's one thing to, to have an awareness about where I am with a singular crisis, how does a person be aware with where they are when there is a domino effect of crises? Does this apply in that regards as well? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I love how you said that. Twenty times twenty. You know, it's um, it's obviously been the the biggest year that any of us have ever experienced. I mean, even when I talk to the you know grandparents and and folks that have been through a lot, this is really compounded this year. And so, you know, the only thing I can say is, <laughs> because I happen to be a little bit of a Pollyanna, is we are learning well how to be resilient. I mean, you know, this topic of resiliency has sort of emerged over the last few years of being so important and something that we want to teach our next generation. Well, guess what? We are getting that training on steroids this year of, you know, of this whole process, you know, and, and yes, we'll walk through a little bit more of it, but right. things happen you react, you respond, and you move forward, you know, you process and you move forward. And 
it's just, it's just fascinating. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't experience all those emotions and it's, yeah, it's definitely been, um, you know, a, 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 so it, I don't know what word to use for the year. An interesting year is usually what I say. It, it sounds like it's, um, also essential for us to be aware that with every new level of crises or with every new crisis or every new trauma, we may have to go through this stage or this cycle multiple times. It's an iterative process with each yes. crisis, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't say this because, you know, like you said, many people have studied this before, but of course we know that the, this change curve, the process, you know, started with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's Yes. Um, work on, on death and dying. So our response to loss and then bridges, you know, work on transition. So it's all kind of predicated upon how human beings respond every time there is a loss, you know, whether, whether they chose it, whether it was, it's good, it's bad. Um, we just kind of always cycle through this. And if we, if we try to jump across, you know, that on my model, try to jump across, it just won't work, yes. but we can become facile at working through it faster and honestly, one of the things that I love talking to leaders about and the reminder and influencers is that you have to realize that everyone else will go through it in their own time. You've got to be mindful of it, that they do need to process. That's powerful. Yeah. Great. So I did want to find out, and maybe I'll ask you, Anissa, and anyone else can write in, is where, do you, where are you today? So just, just look, just today. Like you said, things happen every day. <laughs> Where would you say you're at in this process? For, uh, one for myself, eight. I'm in a, a place of um, acceptance uh, yeah. around um, some of the crises. <laughs> you know, COVID, for example, my son, we will find out later today if he's positive. He just had to go get tested. Um, and then in other, uh, with, uh, take, for example, the racial unrest, I'm, I'm, I'm angry about what people are experiencing and the conversations and, and I feel passionate about it. And I think it's over time. And so it's interesting that you can actually be in different stages of growth, even emotional intelligence yeah. or, as you, as we process through this. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. And for any of the changes, you, you could be in a different place. And yes, as we all know, you can, you know, this is not a linear thing. You don't necessarily go from one through eight. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Exact order. You can go backwards. So um, yeah, the, the important part is, is that awareness. And I love, um, and I love people wrote in, you know, depression to acceptance, you know, so kind of five to six or se six to seven, but can bounce to a two really fast. So yeah, I get you. I, I really do. And that's, and again, that's great self-awareness and what I'm, you know, and, and that is what I'm finding with my clients, of course. And, you know, the people around me is that, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now is that five to maybe six, you know, understanding. And I think by now it's, you know, pretty well known. I, I, I will say I knew early on that, that it was going to be, you know, a year and a half type thing. Um, because of some of my clients, but I, I, you know, now I think we all know that, you know, this is, we're definitely in this for the long haul and, you know, how can we accept what is and, and move forward. So perfect. Good. Thank you. It's, that's, that's where we're at right now is that beautiful self-awareness. And then let's move into some self-management, which is really how can we try to move ourselves up that the right side of the curve and then maybe support our people in doing so. So I, you know, serenity, uh, Fantastic topic. Um, I love, I always go to the dictionary, right? The, defi the definition of the state of being calm, peaceful, and untroubled. I don't know about you, just reading that makes me a little bit more calm, peaceful, and untroubled. It also reminds me that I'm not that as many, as much as the time as I want to be, <laughs> even though I can find it. It would be fantastic to find that even more and more. So we'll talk about how to do that. Um, a lot of people know about, and they've sort of heard the serenity prayer um, because of 12 step work sort of took, took on the work of Niebuhr, a theologist who really starting in about 1937, he would speak and write about his definition of serenity being the courage to change what needs to be altered, right? What must be altered, the serenity to accept what can't be helped and the insight to know one from another. And really, if you look at it, this is kind of life. This is what we're called to do in life is, you know, figure out in any situation. And I have a little bit of 
I don't know if it's coaching, Anissa, you didn't ask for this, but I just have a suggestion. Please. I would even, I'm so big on words. I would even change the word crisis yeah. to situation. Oh, that's, I agree. So yeah, for yeah. obvious reasons that, you know, just the word crisis kind of has us, you know, react yeah. in a certain way um, versus these are, and, and I'm not saying that they're not huge and gravely important, um, especially what you're dealing with today. Um, just, just words are so important. Uh, they are time. important. So, Anyone that has studied um, neurolinguistics programming knows we respond to words um, emotionally and physically. Yeah. And, and that is uh, sage advice to pick our words wisely. Okay, great. So we're going to talk about, so believe it or not, the simple, you know, insight that he created and shared and that has become so popularized is so powerful. So I just really want to ask everyone, you know, kind of listening to this right now, what have you changed that needed to be changed this year? I mean, obviously we could talk for 10 minutes about this, but <laughs> you know, what have you, and, and part of that, a big part is yourself. How have you changed yourself? So I want people to just, you know, reflect on what have you changed that needed to be changed this year? And I'll just put the rest of the questions up so people can kind of reflect. How have you accepted what can't be helped, i.e. changed? And then what wisdom have you shown to know the difference? So I have a question for you. These yeah. are really powerful questions for someone to self-reflect on. Is part of your um, recommendation is that someone process through these as an intentional effort to move towards serenity? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. There's like actually a lot of this is reflection today. Um, not, I don't always do as much reflection. I just think that this is so powerful right now. Yeah. Um, if, if you can really look at, so, so you have life, right? And you have things in control in your life, in your locus of control, things that you can act on, and then things that aren't in your locus of control that you can't act on. One of the reasons that this is just so powerful to look at is, is that is our experience in life. And when we can distinguish that and kind of have the courage, right? Take the action where we need to take it and then let go of the rest, there is peace. I mean, there, that is actually the second part. Both of them are, are, are part of the equation. I find with my clients that the second part is really the bigger part that they can gain from, is what they can just let go. What, when to know enough is enough, you've given it your all, you've tried to change what you can change, you've said what you need to say, you've just taken the action that you need to take, and then you just need to let go of the rest because it's causing a tremendous amount of you know, negativity in your, yes. in your world. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a couple of responses in the chat. Um, found security within myself and know it's going to be okay. Mm. Um, also, I have also learned to embrace change and be an advocate for it. Beautiful. Uh, and then also, I have changed my ability to feel in control of uncontrollable circumstances. I love that. Yeah. 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 And so I just, you know, kind of add, I mean, I even look at our technology, you know, what have we all learned to do to, to figure out even something like the Zoom or working from home or, you know, our communication with others, how we lead virtually. So, you know, so much that we've, you know, learned to navigate and change. And we've had the courage to do that, even if we didn't want to. And then we've also, yeah, you know, the biggest part is learning that, wow, we are, you know, we're, we're, we need to just respond to what's going on and be okay with it and, and learn to adapt to it. Beautiful. Okay, so good. So I encourage you to do that serenity exercise for yourself often. Um, and then let's move into building strength because that's kind of where we all want to get to by the end of the year, even inside of all this. So let's talk about maybe some ideas that we might have to do that. So first of all, I go to the Webster's Dic Dictionary of Strength. One of them is the capacity to withstand great force or pressure. I just don't even know a better definition for what we've all been through so far this year. You know, we are still standing or sitting, whatever the case may be, but we have withstood great force, great pressure, whether it's to change, you know, our working styles, whether it's uh, employees that just didn't, you know, didn't want to do what they were being asked to do or aren't right now. Um, to all of the social unrest, to everything, you know, all that force and pressure, we're strong. You know, we're really, really strong individuals, everyone listening to this right now. 
So I want you to take a look at, again, some more reflection on how have you demonstrated strength this year? So other questions that will kind of help you with that are what have you done that you've never done before? So I mentioned just a minute ago, Zoom. You know, I, I sold this technology 20 years ago and it was hard enough for people to figure out, you know, now it's a little easier, but it's still, it's different. People that weren't using this type of technology, this type of communication, congratulations. It's a lot to learn. It's a lot to feel comfortable with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, like I said, working virtually, working remotely with people, how do you communicate? How do you, you know, get the message across? I'm sure you've done so much that you didn't have to do previously. Um, what did you do that you thought you couldn't? I love that question. That's where that huge courage comes in and strength. I didn't think I could figure all this out. I didn't think I could marshal the troops so quickly. I will say what came up uh, as an example for me is I had a, have a client that within three days, you know, marshaled uh, 1,200 of their employees to remote to be able to work from home. And I know that's not a unique situation. That's just what companies did across the board. So amazing from an, you know, HR and IT standpoint. Yes. Um, what are you proud of yourself for? Again, I don't know about you. Many of my HR partners and leaders don't often stop and ask themselves what they're proud of themselves for. It's important. First of all, you want to model that behavior for others, but I really want to ask you, you know, what are you? And Anissa, by the way, in a minute, I can't wait to ask you because you should be proud of yourself for a lot. Um, <laughs> what are you proud of yourself for? And then finally, or two, two more things. What have you learned that you'll take with you forever? Because we've all learned things in the last four months that we will take forever that are valuable and, you know, jewels for our career and life. And then I just really want you to fill in this blank is I learned I am, you know, resilient, strong, flexible, adaptable, powerful, a leader, um, et cetera, et cetera. However you want to fill in that blank in terms of what you've learned about yourself. So with that, I want to give people, you know, time to kind of process those questions. Um, while they do that, Anissa, do you want to answer any of them for yourself? You bet. You <laughs> bet. Let's see. Um, what have you done that you have never done before? What did you do that you thought you couldn't? <laughs> what are you most proud, proud of for yourself? Uh, what have you learned that you will take with you forever? And I learned. So one of the things um, that I'm most proud of is, you know how when life is normal and business is normal, you, you go about building something new and you think, oh, I can do this in six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, six months, whatever it is. You grab something out of the air and that's exactly how much time it takes mm -hmm. times two. Right, you think, oh, I can get this done in three months and suddenly a year out, you're still working on it. Well, what I learned is that with a little bit of urgency, you can condense anything you wanna get done in a very short amount of time. So literally in like six weeks, my team launched a, a summit. We've had over, you know, uh, I think the net last number was 50,000 views on the videos in a matter of just a few months. They've launched six new product lines. We've created three or four new um, partnerships. We're creating a, a, a career course that you're going to work with us on. And, you know, the point being is all of that would have taken years to create. Then yeah. suddenly, magically, we had the capacity to, to do it in weeks instead of months. Oh, so true, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually a little scary. <laughs> it is. Now what? <laughs> a year ago, you know, we were already in, hey, we're, we're working pretty hard here. Yes. Let's, let's continue to get back to some, you know, boundaries and some balance. And now all of a sudden we learn that, oh, we can do more with less. So, uh, <laughs> but definitely a positive, you know, you know and, I, and I do agree that people have learned that, you know, especially meetings, right? Do, yes. they, do they need to be hour long? Can they just be quicker than that? What, you know, what are our structures? Do people need to spend three hours meeting in traffic? Yeah, probably not. That's a, that's a great learning. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 So good. Okay, good. Um, beautiful. All right. So that's really, you know, what I know I want the, you know, the gift that I want to give to people is just, you know, find that serenity, find that strength in what you've accomplished over this time, who you are, what you know you can do, um, you know, what you know you can create. So I want each of you to take that with you. And if we could just take a moment I would like everybody, if you're proud of yourself in some form or fashion from this year, raise your hand high, straight up in the air, right? Now bend it and pat yourself <laughs> on the back. <laughs> I'm going to put 
Mm-hmm. So from both sides. <laughs> Love it. Well, I think yeah. it's an important piece of this, and you mentioned it early on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got to be able to uh, acknowledge ourselves. And, you know, we're going to move into just reflecting on all of this about our people. But you have to be able to stop and just, you know, acknowledge yourself. And and I don't know. I'm hoping this is not the case. I've just seen some, you know, HR leaders. There's so much. There's still a lot of stress, of course, in organizations. And you know, HR leaders. You know, my partners. They're they're not always acknowledged for everything that they do for the organization and how much they care for their people. And you know, so that's where I, I get to do a lot of work. Is you just you've got to acknowledge each other and yourself because you know you're doing the right thing. Um, you know, every your your leaders are stressed and focusing on so many other things. They don't always stop to do that. So first acknowledge yourself for what you've done. It's not arrogant. It's, it's appropriate. Yeah. And now we get to, you know, finally now we get to turn to help others with their mask. Okay. So different mask <laughs> from the airplane, others help putting their, their oxygen masks. So now, you know, it's really important as leaders and as influencers that we stop, reflect, look, where is, where are each one of my people in the process? You know, I, I know, I think we do this, pretty naturally it's just a really good exercise if you're not already doing this that you need to or or you can help your leaders know to do this is just to really look at that process one through eight where are they in the process and probably ask them um authentically where they might be in that process and have you authentically acknowledged them you know acknowledgement is not actually as natural so I sometimes for, for leaders, right, we're so focused on what needs to get done, what isn't done. Um, you know, we need to remember that three to one ratio, three positives to one constructive. Um, and this is just a really good opportunity to acknowledge people for what they've been through. You know, their world has been turned upside down. They're still surviving and they're contributing to your organization. So whatever that looks like for them, whether they're, you know, um, underworked or overworked because there's two extremes right now going on. How have you demonstrated that it will be okay? So of course we talked about earlier that leadership, that you know the influencer kind of swan on the surface, paddling quickly underneath, yes. <laughs> but showing them that it will be okay. H- have you over communicated? So I don't think I emphasized this as much in the beginning because of how much we've all been through the change process. But you know. W- we all know that in the marketing world, they say we need to hear the jingle seven times. You know, people need to hear that message seven to eight times to have it really sink in and get it. Uh, I find just, I mean, this is why communication is such a broad topic. I deliver it all the time. And I really encourage leaders and influencers over communicate. You know, just when you think you've said something, beat something to death, if you will, or said something too many times, it's kind of when they're first getting it. So it's, <laughs> It seems, it's funny that it's a shock each time it happens, but, and I will just put in that one of the main reasons that happens is that we, you know, I was a leader. I, we, we talk across, we talk up, we talk even, you know, to our spouse or to a, a colleague or something. We talk about a topic so many times by the time we sort of deliver it down with the message that yeah. we want to deliver in our head, we've had that conversation five or six times. In reality, it's the first time they're hearing it. That's right. And then you layer on that we, you know, we miss messages. It takes three to eight times for us to hear it. So anyway, over communicate what you would like people to do, what the next direction is, maybe what their new roles and responsibilities are, what you know about what will happen in the future. I think I've over communicated my message enough right now. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <it. Good> communication. Communication. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, let's just move into these last two where how can you help them find some serenity, you know, maybe teach them that skill of, you know, taking action where they can take action in their lotus circle of control and then what, what there is to let go. And then that strength, right? Really just helping them pull out where they're strong. You know, we forget that people show up every day to work to do their best. And if we don't remind them that they are doing their best and we appreciate that and, and where we're seeing their best, it, it you know, it's, we're not doing our best. So little reminders there about helping them with their masks. So I love it. We've covered a lot in the last 35 minutes um, from processing our experience to, you know, the reminder of emotional intelligence, kind of the whole reminder of the change curve process. And then specific eight, eight stages that we've been through over the last four and a half months 
I would love any questions, comments, shares from anything that we've gone over so far. Well, I have been sitting on quite a few questions. Okay. So, so um, you know, one of the things that I am witnessing and some of our clients and, and what have you is that self-awareness itself isn't always enough to recognize where a person is in their own uh, process of change and their own process of, of processing through the 2020 situations. So let's take, for example, let's say you have a person has a manager who is stuck in one of these stages that is not healthy, but they themselves, the subordinate is recognizing that they're moving more towards strength and serenity and acceptance. And, and perhaps that's feeling like a conflict yeah. Um, when the manager thinks they don't have enough urgency or they're not managing things with enough seriousness, as an example, how I'd like to hear your coaching feedback, your expert feedback on how does someone that's a subordinate communicate up around this issue in an effective way and vice versa. I love that. Oh, what a great topic. First of all, I would say, hey, I just saw this uh, webinar that I think you should check right. out. It's really great. <laughs> So we pass along free, this information. Uh, re, free replay and download. So right, right. <laughs> It'll be available on the web soon. Um, so yeah, and you know, I, I mean, obviously, I say that say that jokingly. You know, plenty of people say, "Let me have your card." You know, let me put it on my manager's desk. Well, let's be a little bit more direct about it. And you know, look, none of us know everything. And you're right. You know, self awareness, we are is it has a blind side, right? It has a blind spot. So we all need help from others, no matter where, where they are in the organization or who they are. And yeah, I speak a lot on, of partnering up, right? It's, you know, partnering up is helping your leader. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they don't know the technical aspects of your role and that's fine and they just need to give them some information or helping them through this process. So I would, I, I mean, I personally would recommend just off the top of my head, honestly sharing, you know, gosh, I just, you know, saw, you know, viewed a webinar and, and looked at the, the process of change and I just wanted to talk to you about it and see, you know, kind of get your thoughts around it, where, where you think you are, where I think I am, where you think I am. That's brilliant. You know, mm -hmm. just, kinda, just kind of talk about this process. And I don't think you, you know, I think, I think initiating that conversation can go a long way and, yeah. and helping them kind of take a look. And, and, you know, obviously we both know that, or we all know that sometimes in the moment people are not always able to sort of admit things or, 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 or own up to aspects of their part um, sometimes, but, but a lot of times they do in reflection yeah. and then it shows up later. So I think just um, starting the conversation and some thoughts about it would go a long way. It's a great question. It's a, a really, really good point. So now let's, let's go from the um, leader who, something that you said earlier, it's really important for a leader to model that it's going to be okay, to demonstrate and communicate we're gonna get through this, even if it looks different than we originally thought going into this year. Um, how can a manager take these concepts and work with their team on them? What would they do first to just introduce them and then begin to foster a culture that can have these kinds of discussions? Because this isn't a normal discussion right. for most organizations. Yeah, and I would I would expect that some obviously these conversations are are happening, right? It's just you, you've got to respond and, and do what you can. And, and but I just think that really focusing in that 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 strength of serenity is really focusing on on what we what can we do. I mean, look, I work with a lot of sales organizations, and it, I have a background in sales, and we all know in the sales world, all you can do is your side, right? Yeah. Take it, you know, back to that twelve step program, your side of the street, right? So all you can do is take action and the action that you know to take, you know, be smart about it, um, you know, be savvy about it, but keep, you know, keep moving forward with what you can control. And then the rest, you've got it, the rest you have to actually have to have faith or it will happen or it won't, but you can only do what you can do and worrying about it or stressing about it or focusing on what isn't happening isn't going to help the yeah. situation at all. So I think those are the conversations that need to be had. And, and when I say, you know, it will be okay, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, our company will triple their revenue and everybody will stay employed. And, and that's, you know, I'm not promising that. I'm just saying we all have the ability. We will survive. And we just need to keep taking the next right step forward. And we'll, you know, we'll do the best possible that we can do. Helpful? 
It is. It's very helpful. And, and now it reminds me of a, if we take this organizationally, right? So we've talked about the subordinate needing to have the dialogue and we've talked about the leader having to represent and model. Um, there's also a situation in where organizations are having to bump up against their own values, bump up against their own policies, um, figure out how to over communicate at the same time they are figuring out how to save the company, for example. Yeah. So my question around that is, let's say as an organization, the temperature is we're not getting enough attention as employees. Um, you guys aren't taking this seriously enough. I happen to know some organizations that they meant well, but the way in which they've managed it are leaving employees feeling like you don't care about us at all complete gaffe, unintentional, but yeah. the problem nevertheless. What does an organization, an organization do now to address it and move their organization towards acceptance, serenity, and, and strength? Yeah. Yeah, it's a really great question. And, and you know, for anyone who studies human dynamics and, and, you know, knows what happens in organizations and especially around change, yeah. that's such a natural reaction. Unfortunately, it's a natural reaction. Remember, we all have that, you know, what's in it for me. That's from sales <laughs> with on everybody's forehead. Um, so really, no matter what, often employees are going to, can often um, fall into that sort of trap or that thinking of they don't care about us. It's yeah. all about the company. You know, honestly, when I coach those employees that are kind of thinking that way, I say, yes, it is about the company. That's who's paying your paycheck. And if they go out of existence, you no longer have a paycheck. So yes, it has to be about the health of the organization first. That's right. And then making sure that we're, we're a healthy organization, that we can keep all the employees that we can, right? So, you know, um, we've got to kind of have, have some maturity about that, I think, yeah. in terms of doing the right thing for an organization. I think, um, you know, and again, that's the reason for over communicating in the beginning for any change management, um, you know, initiative yeah. that people put forward is, is, you know, you really are our priority and kind of that message of we have to do both at the same time. I think at this point in time, I mean, that's all you can do is say, we needed to make these changes to make the organization the, the healthiest and strongest as possible to make sure it's here in the future yes. for you to for you, for you to work for and you're a valued member that's why you're still with us you know that's why we made the decisions that we made we want you to you know be here we want you to contribute sort of you know that that, that in definition definition of engagement of peak contribution peak satisfaction we want both and you know let's just work on that you know what what and i would move into appreciation quite frankly if people yes. were feeling that way of Let's talk about, you know, what you're appreciative of. Let's talk about what, you know, what is working for you here. What, why do you, you know, what do you enjoy about the organization and the mission and what we're, what we're driving towards it's just to help people kind of turn around their, their attitude a little bit. Yeah. So, so your, um, so the prescription is address it. Yeah. Address it. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Have it's real there. conversations about it. If you don't address it, it'll just fester. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, um, and, and when you address it, uh, is there a methodology for supporting folks that don't normally have a, the concept around these eight stages that, hey, we as a culture, we as a company are going to go through this? Have you seen leaders actually be, teach this, you know, EQ coupled with these eight stages effectively? Oh, yeah. I've worked with a few organizations where I just have been, you know, lucky enough or whatever to, to be able to deliver actually both of these topics, emotional intelligence and change management to the entire organization that was going through change. And we yeah. did two rounds of it. So we did sort of level one and level two, level one for both in the beginning, level two for both mid. And that organization, it is one of the two that I'm thinking of right now, they're sort of through the change and they're thriving. I mean, they're, they get it. They, they've been through it. It's the new normal. They've been, and they've communicated the whole way. So that's, it's just so important to be able to process these emotions. And in those initial workshops, that, there was a lot of pr processing and we knew there was going to be a lot of complaining and a lot of, you know, either anger, resentment, kind of bargaining, denial, depression, kind of that was was there when people first heard of these changes. It was a huge organization that I'm thinking of. And because they were able to process it along the way and we just kept working with them, they, they got through it. 
And honestly, right. anyone, like there were a few people toward the end that were holding onto it. And the whole, the organization took care of that, right? It's sort of, this is our culture. We're not going to, we're, we're, we're over here now on this side of the curve. You, you know, you kind of, you need to move with us. And yeah. a, a couple or not, days. right? Yeah. And a couple people didn't, they, you know, people will right. opt out because that's, that's it, exactly right. Yeah. It, it won't work. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's so important. It's so important. And I've seen it where I've, come in later and try to help organizations that just didn't set that up, it's really difficult. It's um, much more difficult after the fact, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that leads me to this, the other question is what happens when an organization tries to go from, um, yeah, yeah, this is gonna all affect us, don't worry, we'll get through it, I know you guys are afraid, but stay with us, and they just kind of skip over acknowledging the other emotions, and they just want people to go straight towards what do you mean your kids aren't going back to school? The schools are opening. You don't have a yeah. choice. You know, they just skip back to get over it. We're strong again. What yeah. happens to an organization when that middle change component is not allowed to happen? <laughs> it's not good. So um, remember earlier I talked about the roller coaster and how what goes down most of the time, what goes down will come up. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, if you try to skip from the beginning to the end, so try to jump that dip, yep. it, the roller coaster will go back down. So it, you will have employees that will just sit in the bottom there of despair, depression, resentment, anger. You know, what I've seen, unfortunately, with some of the clients I've been pulled into is obviously, you know, attrition. So people will leave okay. and, and, you know, they might not leave um, under the urgency. So this happened in, in 2001 a lot as well. Um, in you know the dot com situation, but but they will leave as soon as it opens up, and there will be mass exodus, right? So they might stay and be resistant, but you know that you won't be getting the most out of them. You won't be getting the best out of them. They'll pull others down that might have been inching up. Um, I hate to be so doom and gloom about it. So you know it is difficult. I think if if an organization is finding themselves in that situation right now. Um, I did lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations to just kind of let's process back. Let's go through the steps. Let's see, you know, what are you experiencing? Um, we know that, you know, you've got to be an open door, especially at the beginning of a change and let people just speak to where they are and speak to their fears and um, kind of meet people where they're at. There's, you know, yes, we want to be a role model that we will get to a positive place, but it's not we'll get there now <laughs> or without, uh, without some, you know, rich conversations. That's really, really helpful. So um, what I just heard you say is if an organization gains insight and awareness that perhaps we haven't managed this well, we have left some of our employees in the dip, in the denial, anger, depression, and we're expecting them to get over it. We need to go back. Yeah. And um, ways to do that include lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations, bringing out these eight stages, having authentic conversations about it. How can organizations, for example, use EQ 2.0 to even train their leaders on managing this? Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, I do, this is my favorite book on emotional intelligence because Travis has done such a great job at structuring the strategies, all the That's things right. I used to tell my clients, now they're in a book. So yeah. Um, I think, you know, using a topic like emotional intelligence, whether you want to, you know, bring someone in or like myself or facilitate it on your own. No, it's true. Um, That's why clients hire you, Kim, is yeah. you are an expert in change and, and EQ. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, um, you know, I think, I think educating, so I just did a workshop for someone yesterday on this, but, but educating the entire organization on the topic. And then one thing that I'm going to do for them is, is monthly sessions on each one of the four areas. So where, you know, people do have homework to do, they show up, they've applied it, we're going to discuss it. So I've done that with a number of organizations of, you know, kind of book study situation, yeah. right, where you facilitate the conversation. So it really, like any topic, if you don't, you know, go over it and go over it in detail and have it be a rich part of the culture, it's just going to be another thing that comes and goes. Yeah. Um, most of the organizations I work with, you'll see these books on their desks as you walk around the organization, you know. Hopefully they get opened from time to time, but yes. yes. <laughs> well, this has been really fascinating, um, bringing the concepts around um, change and change development with emotional intelligence, I think is um, uh, pretty unique to some of the work that you do. Will you share with folks, how can they get a hold of you? And tell us a little bit about your, your coaching and your workshops and, and why people hire you. 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whether executive leadership coaching, group coaching is a, um, being asked for more and more, I'm noticing obviously virtual workshops, which is great. Many companies have, are now comfortable with this, this sort of style of yes. training and development. And then I do have a year long leadership development program that I offer for leaders who want some rich development. I, I, I just wanted to share my, you know, right now my top 10 requested topics, like you mentioned, emotional intelligence, of course, inclusion has come higher on the list. Yes. Culture creation, communication, navigating change, clearly. Leadership 101, for, there's a lot of leaders coming in that just need that training on, on what is leadership and, and what, yeah. it, what, what is, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, presentation skills, personality types, engagement, and empowerment and development. So those are kind of the main topics that I'm talking about right now. I could talk about anything as it <laughs> regards to work pretty much or leadership, but mm -hmm. um, those are some of my sweet spots and people can get a hold of me by a phone call, old fashioned way, or by uh, email, Kim at kzleadership.com. I've got my website up there and I will say for the rest of the year, Yes. One who watches this replay or is watching live. I, I mean, absolutely anybody, I would love to help you and support you in any way. So, you know, I put up here 20% discount, um, but for sure, I mean, I want to honor that. So just mention that you, that you watch this, this um, workshop and, and I'd love to be able to support you or your people. Love it. So um, and for those of you who are listening later, you can reach Kim at Kim at kzleadership.com. And that, of course, is also her website. So, um, Kim, thank you. That was um, really excellent. And uh, uh, I was going to show people how they can get a hold of Turnkey, but um, that is no longer available on my screen. So I'll just tell <laughs> folks. Um, you can get a hold of, of us at turnkeycoachingsolutions.com. Me personally is uh, Nisa, A N I S A at turnkeycoachingsolutions.com. If we can put you in touch with Kim, we would be happy to. Um, Kim, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Great questions. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Bye.